back from Hollywood. Hey everybody. All right, I'm Tom Irvin, and this is everything I ever needed to know about InfoSec I learned from Hollywood. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle, uh, if you follow on the Twitterverse, uh, Tech by Tom, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm a senior security, senior security consultant. Um, I honestly, I feel like it's probably one of the most fun legal things I can get paid to do. Um, I've been doing it for a few years now. Uh, I actually got my start in IT and in internal IT, uh, help desk, and worked my way up to system administration. Um, you know, since then I've been doing InfoSec. I I love it. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about Hollywood and, and media, what they think about hackers and what it makes uh, people that aren't in the InfoSec community think about hackers. Um, I, you know, I kind of have a problem with it, and uh, I, I will get to exactly what, uh, although obviously there's, they've got some problems, what I was able to learn from them. <clears throat> so, yeah. This was uh, this is just a really good example of where things started, and I'm going to get to a couple more uh, interesting things here. So give me a chance to rant a little bit. Um, this is a nice a, a few uh, screenshots from uh, uh, NCIS, and <laughs> wow, I, I mean, the amount of things that get wrong here is just amazing. Uh, you know, a couple, couple of quotes: um, They've already burned through the NCIS public firewall. Well, isolate the node and dump them on the other side of the router. Like. This is, this is what the public hears about InfoSec. This is how you prevent hackers from getting in. Um, you might notice on the screen here, we've got an intrusion detection alert. Uh, there were actually a bunch of pop-ups during this, uh, this scene flying all over this computer. Um, you might notice that we've got two people actually here uh, both typing on the same keyboard because I'm pretty sure, at least according to the movies and TV, the faster you type as a hacker, the better you do at defeating the enemy. Um, so I've got a nice little close-up here too. Okay, so uh, moving on. Actually, we work best when we have a gun literally to the back of our heads. Uh, I didn't know that, but Hollywood does. Um, we also use lots and lots of monitors, usually eight at a minimum, uh, although I've seen some uh, where an entire room is filled with screens. That's usually the, those are the most elite hackers out there. Um, also, Gears of War rocks. Uh, that's in that uh, little slide there, too. All right, uh, another one. Um, <clears throat> Apparently, this, this particular hacking organization in uh, Die Hard, um, they're crashing uh, the transportation system, the whole thing. Uh, they also just hit the entire financial uh, sector. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I'm not saying that's impossible, but that's a pretty spectacular uh, claim there that they could do something like that. Uh, another thing we learned from Hollywood, when you're cracking uh, polymorphic engine encryption, uh, what you need to do is you need to represent it, or take the... Uh, hexadecimal representation of the data, and then you look through the hexadecimal code and identify the non-hexadecimal characters and find how that turns it into a word. That's actually your encryption key. Um, so you just find a grand borough uh, with a dash at the end, which is apparently part of the hexadecimal key space now. Um, you turn that into a string, use that, and you can decrypt it and find a map of the, uh, the entire underground um, transportation system. Cool stuff. It looked really cool in the movie, though, right? <laughs> okay, uh, also, uh, just uh, on the same theme, hackers have lots of really expensive computers. I don't even know what these things are, but they look really cool. <laughs> okay, so this, this sucks, because this is what everybody outside of our industry sees. This is the representation of, of what we do and how we, how we do things. Uh, it, we know it's not realistic, but uh, trying to talk about this stuff, they want to see all that really cool stuff they saw in the movies, right? <clears throat> so, um, it's, it's entertaining. The reason they, they like seeing it is it's, it's cool, and I'm not going to lie. I like watching that stuff, but I hate the details that they get. Um, and the problem is, over time, when you see this stuff over and over, if that's how you're exposed to hacking, then this is what you start thinking the hacking is. I know that people have some sanity. They don't think these things happen like that, but they start to pick up, like, this is, people go after your firewall. They do these different things. Um, they might happen sometimes, but the, real, the reality is these attacks are more complex and there's a lot of details. All right, so I'll get off that rant and we'll talk about what I'm really here to talk about today. Um, these problems that we are trying to solve are complex problems. Um, the people that usually are in charge of giving us our resources, our time, um, the, the funding the, and, and purchasing the equipment, 
Uh, the people that are ultimately responsible for that don't necessarily always have a good understanding of the details that we have. Uh, we're there to advise them. So we need to find a way to communicate and motivate, uh, communicate these problems clearly and motivate those people. Um, <clears throat> our audience, though, uh, I want to make sure I'm, th I'm, talk I'm using this talk in a way that uh, you, you can use the same information to motivate your users. If you want to communicate information security to your users, uh, to your customers, um, to, uh, to management though, as well. Uh, and, or if you're in IT, you might get to communi communicate that stuff to everybody. So uh, good luck to you. <laughs> but here's, I'm going to help you as, as much as I can. Uh, so what do we need to do? Uh, we're gonna, we need to create the belief that this thing is worth fixing, right? Um, <clears throat> if we're going to take action, we need to make that belief as strong as possible. Um, <clears throat> We need to give them some facts to back this information, to back what we're saying, though. So if we just say, well, we can do this thing, we need to be able to prove that we can do it. We need to show how it works. And if we're going to be the most inf influential as possible, um, we need to make, make sure that we're keeping our audience engaged and interested the entire time. All right, so uh, this, this whole Hollywood thing made me realize something. Um, actually, these visualizations uh, are actually pretty useful. Uh, they get people interested. Uh, so a storyline, a storyline, a convincing storyline, uh, visuals to go to correlate that storyline. Um, if you combine those two and you lead with that as the, as the problem, then it's a much more compelling um, get a bit of information than a, just a presentation of a bunch of issues, right? Okay, so we decided I, I, that it's gonna be best if we uh, approach this issue as a list of, of or not a list, but a, a story. Uh, so we need to go ahead and take on that, that challenge and, and, and walk through exactly how what we can do or what we did during a test, uh, you know, presents a real problem. All right. So let's prepare. Uh, the first part of preparing for this whole, this whole this, uh, scenario, um, we need to come up with, before we start anything, we need to decide what context, what, what's the problem we're going to try to solve, right? Um, so there's, a, there's few, a few things here that we need to think about. Um, the first one is we're going to be guiding a decision about information security. We're not trying to resolve a certain percentage or a thing like that. We need to think about exactly what it is we want the outcome to be. Um, we want to make it visual, and, and most importantly, we want to make sure that we're soliciting feedback. We, if we can get everyone to buy in and we can get participation in solving the problem, it's going to be a lot more effective than just saying, I know what I'm talking about. You should do what I say. All right. <clears throat> Uh, so, I'm, most of my talk here is, is talking about how we context this, but I want to talk about real quickly some tips. And these four things here will make any conversation with you have with somebody more influential. There are just little bits and pieces about the way people take something from somebody else uh, that, that makes it more interesting to them and more likely that they'll go with the decision you're trying to convince them of. Uh, the first thing is you focus on one problem at a time. If you talk about everything, if you talk about all aspects of social engineering and, and patch management and all the other bits and pieces that you need to do when you're running a, an information security program, if you talk about all of it at once, it turns into a big jumbled mess. So focus in on one key area at a time and solve that and then move to the next. Um, the second thing is validation from a second or third party. Um, people have this weird thing, if, if you introduce if somebody that they know and they respect uh, or somebody that's reputable in, in the industry or for whatever reason introduces you or, or basically says, I believe what this person says, um, that makes that person, the person you who is presenting this information is much more influential right away. That's just how our minds work. Um, create some contrast. So if we're talking about, um, you know, if we, want, if we want them to do something, uh, we need to show what what they're doing well, give them some contrast. Say, uh, you're doing these things, these five things really well, and I think that you're doing everything you should be doing. But I did find this one problem, and I'm really concerned about it. Or we're doing these things well, uh, but there's this one area that I think we need to improve in. Um, and then show the potential impact. If, you, if there is, um, you know, there needs to be some demonstration. If you're just collecting a bunch of, bunch of statistics about a thing and saying the statistics are the reason that you should fix this, you're going to miss out on the potential to show why it matters to the business. They're, saying, they're here, oh, this is a bad thing, and this number's high, and that, and that is not necessarily as convincing. Okay, focus on why it matters. Um, and and uh, I'm not saying, I'll skip through this a little bit because I'm 
on time here. Uh, I'm not saying that you should uh, completely forego using statistics to back your argument, but the statistics themselves shouldn't be the argument. Um, talk about what happened, and I'll get to in, later here exactly what you should what you should be doing to explain what happened. Um, when I'm doing, I'm a pen tester. Um, when I do um, my visualization during these these meetings, when I explain these problems, uh, one tool that uh, I really like to use is Armitage, and, and Cobalt Strikes a paid version of that. Um, the reason for that is it shows great visualization of you know, I got into this machine, and you see a real computer, and you go to the next machine, you have a line between those machines, you can show, hey, I got into your network this way, you can see the firewall. Uh, people absorb that way better than just talking through the story. All right, um, if you don't have those tools, or you don't feel comfortable using those tools, there's no reason you can't still show that same kind of visual using like Physio if you're in IT, uh, or if you just wanna walk through and draw it out, whiteboard it, do some way to show how that process, how it broke down. <clears throat> All right, so let's give a, I'm going to give a little, uh, basically an example uh, scenario. Uh, and I'm going to create some contrast between what I see uh, a really easy way to go through a, a risk analysis, uh, and then also what I, what I think is the most convincing and, and compelling way you can go through that same type of test. All right, so case one, I'm going to call it a statistical analysis, just so we can keep these two separate. Uh, case one, we're going to, we're going to test um, who clicked a link. We're going to do a phishing assessment. We're just going to identify, okay, who clicked these links, who went to the website, who did X, Y, and Z. Um, and the alternative to that is we start out on a, an assessment where we think, um, what is what is phishing mean to this company? What risk does that put us at? All right? So we're gonna, when we're delivering this information, we're gonna be thinking about the first, the first thing that comes up is either gonna be, hey, we got the results back. 37% of people clicked this link, did this action, this failed on this many systems, this thing broke here. Um, or we say, hey, we, notif we identified that during testing we were able to do X, Y, and Z. Once we did those things, we got access to this data or we got access to these systems and when we were on those systems, we exfiltrated your customer database with all your home addresses, social security numbers, uh, the account numbers when they open their accounts, that kind of information. I can tell you which one's gonna be more concerning to an executive. <clears throat> All right, so what are we going to get out of, uh, you know, case one, the statistical analysis, the end, end presentation is going to be some charts and some graphs, and these, these are things that are really easy to measure, um, these, these create metrics that people will like to look through, um, but the problem is then the focus becomes on those metrics, not on the problem, which is what we're trying to solve. Um, when we're in doing an actual analysis of the risk and understanding why that risk exists and what, what we messed up on, uh, or what went wrong, I should say, um, then we're going to have a list of, uh, or show, showing of basically uh, what, you know, what was exfiltrated. All right, so let's see, during a presentation, so these are some, some samples of what you might see. Uh, maybe we see uh, what they clicked on, what they, uh, who, you know, who opened the email, who clicked the link, who arrived at the web page and, and entered credentials, and who maybe downloaded something or got compromised. Um, use that, but don't use that as the thing you, you start your argument out with. <clears throat> um, in contrast to that, during a risk analysis, we look at, here's the picture of the email we sent out. And this is how you start the conversation. Your, all of, or a segment of your users received this email. Um, they clicked that link, and they went out to a website, and we convinced them to do a certain thing. Um, you know, whether it was downloading something, or, they, or did we got access to the machine through, you know, I, I know a favorite, it's a Java applet. Um, once we did that, now show them, in, and I can do this in real time sometimes during exits if I'm, I, if I trust the demo gods, um, show them, <laughs> I got access to this machine, okay? Now, if you walk in and you still have access to that machine, show them you have access to the machine. Grab a screenshot of whatever that person's doing right then and there. Once you have that, then say, okay, now I pivoted from that machine and I went into another computer, right? I got access into that other computer uh, and we, dis we discovered, oh, that's a loan originator. Well, they have authorization to create loans for your company. Is that going to be a problem? Well, then we went ahead and pivoted into their browser and we used browser pivoting, which is a great feature of Cobalt Strike, and we actually were able, to, and we can sit in the meeting and show them this. Let's go ahead and create a loan. Is that, you know, and now let's see if we can jump over to somebody that actually will sign off on that loan and see if we can digitally sign off on that loan from their computer. Um, 
seeing it play out. Uh, I know that you, during your testing, it's going to take a long time to do this, but you can go back through the things you know you can do in that meeting, and it is a, so, such a, a more interesting and convincing argument than showing a couple screenshots and talking about what you could do. All right. <clears throat> so what, what happens now that we're all done with this? What's the response? Um, typically, if you're talking about the number of people that did something, that's the problem. So how do we fix the problem? Well, we try to reduce that number, right? Uh, and, but if we're doing a risk analysis and we're understanding what happened, management's going to want to know. If we kicked off the thing talking about what happened, they want to know what they can do to fix it. What's, what broke and why, why were they able to do the thing that they were successful at doing? Okay, so what ultimately happens? Uh, the statistical analysis, we're going to decide that we're, the way we can fix it is we can increase the amount of training we're doing. We're going to, you know, give them, you know, a longer training session. We're going to follow up with the people. If we trick them, then we're going to tell them, hey, you know, you messed up. You need to go back through training again. Um, we're going to basically try to drop those percentages. And that's not a bad thing to do, but that's not fixing the problem. The problem is access to the data. Um, so if we're doing a risk analysis, the outcome is we are invited to have a discussion about the things that broke, the things that should have stopped, that we know how to fix these problems, but getting an invitation to discuss what broke in light of the fact that, some, that it happened and we were successful um, is, is exactly the kind of situation we want to be in if we want to actually fix, help somebody fix this, this type of attack. All right, so <clears throat> assuming we're on, the on this uh, alternative uh, testing and we, and we actually got got management to a point where they want to hear how to fix it. We get to actually break it down. So, yeah, employee training is probably part of part of the thing you want to do. Okay, but what about network monitoring? What about uh, data loss prevention? Prevention. What about access monitoring? Are there things inside your network that you could do after they get in that you can stop? So, uh, yeah, I want you to help reduce. The we always want nobody to click links. That would be cool, but uh, good luck. Um, <laughs> We, but once we, let's assume that somebody gets in, okay? So if they get into the network, let's start talking about, well, once they get in, what are they going to start doing that we can catch? How can we monitor for that? How can we identify that as quickly as possible so when somebody does click that link, we can actually fix it. We can go after, you know, go find that machine and, and stop it as quickly as possible. Um, if somebody's exfiltrating data, if we, during a testing, maybe just exfiltrate a lot of data, you know, do you have a way that you can detect when somebody's pulling a lot of stuff out, out across your perimeter? Um, and then when, uh, on top of that, uh, access monitoring, you, do you have a way to detect when there's a lot of machine, or a single person that's accessing a lot of other computers in your network that they don't normally touch? Do you have a way to detect that they're pulling down customer databases that they don't normally touch or that they shouldn't have access to? Do you have ways to, to note when those things are going on? Because those are all things that happen that were individual problems of this, this whole, hey, somebody fished me. Okay, <clears throat> so what's the ultimate outcome? Um, in my experience, what happens if we talk about um, the, uh, the length or the, the percentage of time that people are going to respond or click a link, uh, we're going to start talking about basically scheduling the testing next year and hopefully it'll be better. Um, sometimes it gets better. All right, but if, if we've gone through an analysis of the problem and we've, we've broken it down into the individual pieces and parts, that didn't go right and we identify ways to fix it and systems to implement uh, and alerts to set off, then we're in a situation where uh, long term, um, they're finding ways to make this attack less pra practical. And my example is phishing, but this could just as easily be any sort of internal network problems. This could be uh, you know, any kind of flaw. I, this is just one example that I'm using here. All right, um, so I guess I've flown through all my slides here. I do want to mention, I avoided saying any of these things. Um, these are not necessary. We can talk about these technical terms without, or you can talk about these technical problems without mentioning all these things that people like to talk about. So um, I'll just open up for some discussion here. Anybody have any questions? Silent room. Okay. Well, thanks so much.